I would like to start the year with a review of the World Taekwondo rule changes that happened last year. Let's check it out. Hello dear friends, students and families, Happy New Year, it's great to be back and start a new series of videos with you all. As always, if you have questions, feel free to leave a comment, I actually love hearing different points of view and trying to try my best to figure them out. Of course, if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I would like to start the year with a review of the World Taekwondo rule changes that happened last year. Now that we have almost one year uh, of tournaments, we have a clearer picture of what's reinforced and what's not, what stays and what goes. Let's check it out. Let's start with the most important rule change in my opinion, which was the rule directed towards leg blocks, kicking your opponent's leg, holding your leg up more than three seconds, or doing more than uh, three kick me there before you land the kick. And that, long story short, is towards the canceling technique. And a lot of people here were confused by it, and I was confused for a while as well, because the rule uh, clearly states that you cannot use cancel kicks, but then how come we still see cancel kicks in all the tournaments and all the big tournaments as well in pretty much all the matches? Uh, and obviously I don't have a clear answer on that. I just know what's happening and I know uh, what's happening right now is that the rule is not reinforced. And my thinking is because maybe it's harder for the referees to reinforce the rule in a full action uh, type of sparring setting, right? Uh, because canceling sometimes it does look like a kick a lot. And a lot of players became smarter obviously and they make it look like a kick instead of like a straight cancel. A straight cancel would be, for example, I have Chad here with me and I have this noodle. This would represent their front leg, their opponent's front leg that you are trying to cancel. So for example, if you do just straight cancel like this, that would be the most uh, obvious way of canceling a kick. And I, I'm, I was thinking that could be forbidden and that could be reinforced. But if you make it look like a kick, I do not think is that bad, right? And a lot of players do it this way. Instead of canceling just straight up, now they, start, they can cancel you by sending your leg in different ways. So let's say if I plan to do flop kicks, I can cancel you on the inside. I flop towards or over your kick and then I flop over the head or even towards the chest guard right here. So that's one way that they made it look like a kick. And my thinking is that the referees are not reinforcing it because it looks a lot like that. However, we're going to continue to post videos on the canceling technique and we're, continue, you're, we're actually continuing to train uh, the canceling technique with our team because if you don't do that and others do it, you can just be at a disadvantage. But this rule goes because it's not really reinforced, so it's almost like it doesn't exist so far. Let's check out the next rule change. The second rule change I wanted to check out was the best of three rule that involves player winning the rounds before winning the full match. That's similar with other combat sports like boxing or MMA. And I think that rule is good from a timing standpoint because some matches just end faster after two rounds instead of three rounds. And of course, uh, it tends to uh, help the sport uh, by making it more entertaining because players have to be more active in order to not lose the round. If you lose one round, obviously you are closer to just being defeated. Uh, therefore, not as many three round boring matches anymore you see more action and i think uh, it's also as i said good from a timing standpoint and it does help tournaments stay on schedule easier from my experience this role also creates a lot of surprises and as you can see higher ranked athletes being taken out easier does this role really help the sport well we need more time to see but i personally enjoyed it what do you think let us know in the comments but for now this role stays the rule changes that I like the most would be the one that uh, forbids you kicking with the bottom of the foot or side of the foot while you're in the clinch. Uh, so that cancels the, the monkey kicks, which I think is great for the sport because those are not real kicks and that's just a way of scoring. It's just a way that players took advantage of the electronic system that uh, we all use nowadays. So for example, when you are in the clinch, obviously this is forbidden. 
this is forbidden. What I'm waiting for though is for this to be forbidden as well because to be honest, on this one I haven't seen it being reinforced as much. It's the same idea of being in a clinch but trying to do instead of a crescent kick, you are doing this crescent kick with bending the knee and you're just, they are touching the helmet like that. It's also, that still kind of looks like a monkey kick but it just goes to head level. And to be honest, this one is not really reinforced. I mostly saw it reinforced to the body level and players actually kind of stopped doing it. And uh, that is great because again, these are not real kicks. These are just ways of scoring and we have to uh, keep the integrity of the martial art uh, intact. And I think we should practice it at uh, you know 100%. Uh, the second rule that I liked uh, a lot as well, the second rule change that I liked a lot as well, was the one that was involving uh, uh, you not getting a penalty if you do spinning kicks and you fall. Why? Because spinning kicks in general are pretty difficult to do. And because of the action, sometimes you might go down. Let's say if I counter attack with the spinning kick on their attacks and I go, I go down, that happens a lot because I don't know, we bomb legs while we're there or anything like that. So this rule change I like the most, let's say if I would do any type of jump spinning kick and I go down, right? If I do back kick and sometimes you go down, you wouldn't get the penalty or if you do 360, spinning hook kick and then you fall somehow, let's say you would just be okay. You wouldn't get the penalty for that. And I really applaud these two changes because I do think they uh, make the sport more entertaining. Bottom line, I think World Taekwondo needs to professionalize the referees and have a clear body of referees that have this as a main job and that are paid for it because all the big sports have pro referees. And although it's always challenging to apply the rules 100% correctly all the time, I think this would motivate them to do it right and it would, it would also help the sport a lot. That's it for today. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to smash that like button. We'll see you in the next episode. W1 out. Make sure you check out our last video. Spinning techniques are not used as often as the regular techniques, but they are making their way back to do the high scoring you can get if you execute them. And someone who spins a lot and especially attacks with spinning kicks a lot is very intimidating because obviously you notice their confidence that they have um, in order to spin that way and risk it that way. But don't worry, we have two solutions today that are pretty devastating against spinning techniques. Let's check them out.